Hi Janaki, welcome. I'm just going to send you a request, Janaki, and then we'll bring you. I think you have sent me a request. Let me just check that. Hi Janaki. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you, Janaki? <laughs> I'm fine. We are all doing. We are all doing by. Let's put it that way. Yeah, I know. I mean, I'm often nowadays like when somebody asks me, I say I'm fine, and then I realize that I'm actually not so fine. So I'm really confused about how to respond to that question. You have learned to adjust. That's all. Absolutely. Thank you so much for being a part of uh, the Hindu Weekends Lockdown with Weekend series, Anki. Thank you and the Hindu for inviting me. most welcome janaki please just allow me a minute to uh, you know sure, sure. introduce you i've just sort of um, uh, looked at your website and created a short uh, introduction so just give me a second to you know a couple of minutes to introduce you yeah, yeah. dr janaki langarajan's journey in bharatanatyam commenced at the age of 4 under the tutelage of shrimati madhavi chandrashekar in trichy at the age of 7 janaki came under the guidance of dr padma subramaniam in chennai uh with whom she studied for the next 15 years for more than 25 years now janaki has been on her own showcasing new productions both traditional and avant garde and creating a unique voice and style in bharatanatyam critics around the world have given her rave reviews in fact the new york times hailed one of her performances as spell binding janaki's performances have taken her across the globe she tours with new choreographic works and conducts workshops In addition to being an accomplished dancer, Janaki is the co-founder of Kala Shreya, a not-for-profit organization dedicated to the promotion and protection of Indian classical arts. One of Janaki's passions, which I just discovered today when I read her website, is supporting organizations that dedicate themselves to the protection and education of children in India. Yes. As a teacher, Janaki devotes time and energy to developing a new generation of dancers who are dedicated to Bharatanatyam. Janaki is also trained in Carnatic music and Veena. Um, so Janaki, I, I left out a big bunch, but I thought that it would be interesting to talk about so many things. That was that was a lot. You could have just said <laughs> Bharatanatyam dancer. <laughs> I'm sure most people on this uh, in this who joined this conversation really know you and need no introduction. But this was also to kind of you know. Um, re-establish the points that i'm going to be actually discussing with you today so tonight actually so janaki firstly i'm going to start off by um asking you about you know for 25 years you've you know created for yourself a unique style and voice of your own i'm really curious to understand in your own words how would you define what is the core of that style and would you think it's a culmination of you know your uh, uh, you know your training in the formative years from your two gurus or is it a sort of you know did you kind of drift away and create a style that was based on that training so i'm just kind of curious to understand what is that core style that you've crafted for yourself i truly believe that whatever i do is doesn't come out of nothing it's it's not that i'm some swayambhu or something that has created something or something like that i don't believe it at all any creative thing that i do has has already been there i'm just uh, probably reformatting it i believe yes. i don't i'm thinking it like that like that only yeah, yeah, yeah. so i want to uh, tell you that like every bharatanatyam student i had rigorous training in both the adavas and in addition to it uh, the karanas so i was trained in both and when i took uh, the uh, decision to just be a dancer that's all there is nothing more be a dancer give yourself 24 7365 to dance itself there was this process that i undertook it was about for about 5 a little more than 5 years where i would not dance any items at all what i would do is i would go into my adavas and my karanas and feel them until then i was just doing them i wasn't feeling them i wanted to feel them for what they are what they are what is it that that was inside me what is it that happens to me when i do these movements what is this energy that is getting transformed and how am i feeling about this and that took me a long 
like I said, five, five and a half years. Mm. But I took the decision. I said, if I want to be a dancer, I need to understand what this dance is. I've been taught. I truly believe in what I've been taught. I, um, I strongly believe in the grammar and the tradition and everything. At the same mm. time, I want to understand it from inside. And I okay. did that. And that was a very organic process that changed me a lot. It chiseled me from inside, uh, Akila. Yeah. Um, and that's that, interesting. Yeah, the yeah. result of that is what you are seeing today. And I'm ever evolving. How I was yeah. five years back to today is I'm ever evolving. And I'm constantly trying to find myself and what this dance is inside of me. What is this thing? This is dance. So I'm trying to constantly find myself and that is that is a, a uh, that is a constant journey for me and i find it truly um, you know humbled when i see to something be... or when i find something about myself and i unlearn and i relearn and i keep unlearning i read a lot i read a lot i'm one of those bookworms you may say so i sit right. there i just pour into things so again understanding of the movement analysis was very important for me and the knowledge comes from my training the knowledge comes from my own understanding in the space i'm just standing there i'm just this body that is trying to move that understanding i am getting the knowledge from all that i read around me so all that you see is i i, I don't know how to put it it's all together it comes from and when i listen to something it's very organic choreography is very organic it happens right my body just right. moves my the movement begs to be there it is right. not here it is more it's everywhere yeah right so janaki what i'm hearing is it's a lot of like um, looking around but also looking within introspection is very important for me inward inward journey is extremely important for me which i found which i find myself uh, gravitating towards more and more more and more that I find it be liberating, Akila. Yeah, no, I'm sure. And you also feel just as as you. Sorry, but many things that used to me bother me when I was younger don't bother me anymore. Or vice versa. <laughs> you may say so. <laughs> I suppose, yeah. Um, well, Janaki, I'm also curious to know, like you know, in the context of dance, and as a dancer. why is it important you think as somebody who's had that journey to have really a unique identity of your own and what are the different ways in which that identity can, identity can actually be um articulated or expressed every body i i believe this also every body every mind every voice every thought is unique in its approach in the way we communicate because everything is layered with all the different experiences that we gather along the path that we go on so when we stop understanding that and we find ourselves aligning with somebody somebody something said somebody did this what yeah. looks good on somebody else may not look good on you at all so that understanding be yeah. that what is it that is innate to you and what is it that you you can contribute to the field in in a very small way that you contribute to the field because that is how tradition evolves if everything was so stagnant i i don't think we would have gone through so many thousands years of uh, evolution of tradition yeah. and art, as you see from when back then to here art has changed considerably and 100 years it will change even more it's inevitable you can't stop it at all that is what will happen you may not like it you may disagree with it but it will happen regardless and that is because of the unique thought processes and uh, the um, the the century the time that we live in itself and all the experiences that i we have today um contribute to it vehemently so i think it's very important that as an artist you need to understand everything that has been told that has been taught but also not just take it analyze it understand yeah, it look yeah. at all different sides of it and see look at it not yeah exactly from different perspectives so what i find lacking there is you know you just want to have one perspective and you want to say that that is the perspective that is one perspective that is a perspective not the perspective so it is important and your perspective is as important your voice is as important otherwise what are we doing in this art field i want to know that for people who tell me that this is what it is 
and there is nothing this is carved in stone there is nothing else but this then what of every what is every all all the other artists doing in this field what are we doing what you know what i mean absolutely yeah contributing what are you doing who are you as an artist what is that art that you are giving what is what does that mean so i want to yeah. feel it i want to feel palpable to me so yes. i believe the artist but it's it is it is a journey it's a struggle i don't deny it to find that voice is a huge struggle yeah but you have to struggle i have time and again said it and i'll say it today also if you don't struggle you can't find what you want to find the search is a struggle but we don't and stop it's constant so. right it's constant it's constant it's not like there is an end point to the struggle no i don't think so i think i will keep evolving until i die and that's perfectly fine when i've come to terms with it because it chisels me it shapes me it makes me grow in many different ways that i didn't even think i could it challenges me right. it invigorates right. me and there is this right. purpose for me and i like that purpose so this life and right. this is my purpose and i find that purpose to be liberating for myself yeah sure yeah. yeah janki so i'm also like you know um i didn't sort of plan this but you know i also see that there is a certain uh, both i hear a both philosophical and a spiritual um sort of um, um relationship so to speak with dance would you agree that it's important for uh, uh, for an artist to sort of finally it, it can't just be about the dance and the movement it has to be about it has to kind of like you said feel right yeah. and also to to kind of you know cultivate and nurture a sort of a of so in a certain way that it's shaping you both from a as a human being as well absolutely akila there is if you're a true i mean i'm not going to uh, judge anybody or anything please don't take it that way but if you really are passionate sure. about your art it will change you in so many different ways it will touch every single aspect of your life and will it will ask you for more and you have to give you have to give it you have to surrender to it you should be you should sacrifice for it if need be you can't do it you can't satiate art just like that art is something way bigger than any any uh, anyone can comprehend our human mind is very simple compared to what art can do and what it is so to understand that big thing and how minuscule and fragile we are and to understand and surrender to it completely i think that should be done because it will i don't know it is very abstract for me it is it'll just you know you can fly with it it just shapes you completely changes you shapes you but let it let it do what it needs to do let it do it right give give yourself right. so it yeah. is very spiritual for me at least it's very spiritual and there is no no uh, really no day without art for me no day and that right. is how i want to live and at what point janki did this sort of you know this sort of um, this quality of uh, seeking right and this quality of wanting to be in pursuit and coming to terms with the fact that this is a lifelong pursuit when did that happen to you like it's sort of a transformational <laughs> i don't know when it happened akila i really can't say uh, but i'm glad it happened let me put it that way i don't know yeah. when but i'm glad it was a very natural and organic process the more and more i find myself there is so much so many people have done through the centuries and when i look at it i feel so small all the time i'm like i want to see this i'm small i'm so small compared to what people have done how much they have uh, whether it is cultures or whether it's poetry or whether it is dance music what are paintings take anything anything artistic I mean, it's. I cannot even. I cannot fathom. I. I mean, that is how I always feel, and uh, I'm glad I'm feeling that way because it pushes me to learn further. It pushes me to open myself to learn even more, and I'm glad I'm in that path. Yeah. And it's not uh, pertaining to just Bharatanatyam for me. It, it never was. Um, I've right. always been enamored by everything that is dance and art around me. It doesn't need to be one particular form, and I don't believe in it either. i practice one form that is all right you know um, uh, janki I, i from what you what you said i'm wondering that it's also so important to have that quality of wonderment right and to never really lose that quality of wonderment i'm like a child i'm like yeah. a child every time i find something that i didn't know 
I'm like a child in a candy store. Believe me, my eyes go wide, and I'm not trying to just glamorize it or anything. I'm literally like no, that. No, no, for sure. I'm like, oh my imagine. god! Oh my god! And it strikes me like, oh my god! I'm always like that, and I find that liberating. Yeah. That's like almost like being a student always, right? For life, a student, always a student. Yeah, always. Um, you know, uh, Janki. Today, when I was uh, doing my research for this interview, I read this uh, beautiful. Uh, there was one liner by uh, Leela Venkatraman, uh, uh, dance critic, um, and yeah. she in Narthanam she's spoken about how you, your dance has a sculpture-like quality. She says Janki Rangarajan has a sculpture-like quality in her Bharatanatyam, which has an impeccable geometry. of chiseled stances i found this really so beautiful and i yeah. wanted to ask you about how there is would you believe that there is a uh, a both a science and an art to your dance a sort of constancy and movement yeah and why a both form and flow crucial to you and yeah. perhaps crucial for the world of uh, of you know of dance and dancers first i want to thank uh, leela venkatraman ji for that uh, for that note uh, really thanks for pointing it out or noting it saying it like that um and also i don't know whether it's crucial for everyone but what i find is i have constantly found stillness in movement and movement in silence so i'm always looking for that i'm trying to decipher that it's not always movement means it's not movement 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 so when she says yeah. i don't know it just happens it is very organic to me it is not something i say i mean of course the practice is there i'm not going to negate the practice and the hard work that goes into everyone who dances they put in that kind of hard work and it shows in the way you dance also but at the same time it goes when i dance it is not just body alone so there is something more right. that is happening at a higher level for me constantly and i find that that even in like i said movement there is something that is that is very very calm and be yeah. quiet to me and even yeah. in a pose there is something that is flowing for me and the flows come and my the way i have been trained is not just uh, adav structure but also the adav structure is basically varur bani style of adav structure is what i have i was taught and but now when i render the adavs it's not exactly that because of the processing that has gone through the years okay. again Yeah. but base yeah. I, the base is that and the and the karana structure so it is it's an amalgamation of both and uh, some kind of i find uh, i have uh, always constantly been uh, enamored by the energies that that go in and back you know go back and forth and how they flow in the movements and things like that constantly i'm think how does this flow beautifully like this so those things uh, make a lot of what my movements are right so the energy is some energy is something i constantly and i tell my students also really think about that energy that you know you're not creating you're not destroying you're transforming constantly transforming and what are you transforming please take go into that transformation and you're transforming energy you're transforming something in inside yourself also in the process right for sure yeah so what is yeah. all what is all this happening so pure nritta is not just pure nritta for me not just throwing out a few adavas no it doesn't happen that way so this constantly this and i'm very emotional person so there's emotive quality to what i do whether it is pure nritta i mean content is different even pure nritta there is a i i find that yesterday i was telling one of the students it's like i'm constantly making love to my movements yeah It's so true. So, love, love. Or, uh, I'm sorry if this, uh, you know, anybody num- under 18. I'm sorry I said that, but I'm constantly. Okay. <laughs> I'm constantly. Not in today's context, Janaki. Don't I'm worry about it. Love to my movements. It's my partner, and I'm constantly playing with it, teasing it, mocking it, everything, whatever it is, all plethora yeah. of things I want to do with it. It's my partner. Yeah. 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 How beautiful. Yeah. um you know uh, janke i want to ask you a little bit about you know negotiating the world of dance surely that isn't easy because it's not just like you just you're not just only a dancer you're also negotiating so many other aspects so many other dynamics that exist in the world of dance um you know and so many obvious and not so obvious undercurrents um what are some of the challenges that you have had to personally deal with 
just tell us a few stories in terms of you know what have been your challenges negotiating the world of dance um i think i right now at this point of time i don't negotiate this is who i am right. this is my right. voice and this is how i project my voice but let me go back a few good years back and there was there, there was this and still i mean but it's just i don't negotiate that's all yeah, um that's right about a style a particular style has to be there to be called a bharatanatyam dancer right so uh, maybe young dancers go through it at this point of time but again these are young minds they are traversing this in their own way with their own experience and we should let them do in their own way in their own without risk right. many factors that come into i might say don't just do whatever you want because i'm in a position right. where i can say will not apply to everyone the thing is for me major thing early very much earlier on we are talking decades back is um actively uh, uh, teachers would come and tell me that this is not bharatanatyam they would straight away say right. you are not doing bharatanatyam you you should not be dancing right. so i have had people come and straight away say, say that, that to me wow i take it i have taken it with respect um not thought about right. anyway that has not lessened yeah. my on of them at all yeah But that is their view sure. that is their view that is how i took it that is their view and right. i've had yeah. comments like oh, she is so aggressive she is so acrobatic um she is too uh, sensuous she is too erotic so it has gone both ways in the sex spectrum sometimes This, okay wow take a pick either i'm aggressive and acrobatic or i'm sensuous and erotic please tell me which one i <laughs> <laughs> just make up your mind yeah <laughs> but i'm all of those and i gladly embrace them you say i'm acrobatic right. sure i'm acrobatic i'm erotic sure and sensuality okay. is something that's inherent to me humans are sensual i'm not going to give up that part of me i'm sensual if you find it too sensu sensual then you need to check your your where your threshold is <laughs> rather than tell me especially when we are talking about women bodies today which is a huge uh, conversation today that how right. you project how a woman projects herself is still a uh, right. debate and it's up for discussion can you believe it's up for Absolutely, discussion yeah. now why is it even right. up for debate or discussion right. i don't think it should be whatever they are whoever they are that's how they are so absolutely so some of the challenges uh, uh, akila and i do feel that maybe today also these challenges are being met by young dancers yeah. and sure. uh, all that i want to tell them is make sure that your foundation your grammar is really good and right. on top of that any voice that you bring that you layer with your voice have the conviction have the hardcore right. research uh, make sure that you have a sound grounding in what you are projecting and right. have conviction to move forward um right. that is all i have to say and i know that it is not easy for any of the young dancers out there but with experience comes strength and if right. you have to fall a few times don't be scared you have to fall right that is the right. way to, and in the field we are uh, i think right now we have a lot of uh, things and the other thing is that i find it i did not have to go through is this uh pay to perform and uh, uh free watching so those things i have been battling uh, kila i know that yeah. i i am battling it and i know that not everybody can battle it i understand it correct I, correct yeah, because absolutely say you i can tell i can point my finger and say you know what you're wrong because you paid to perform but then so many circumstances come into play then correct So I just sit here and but from my where I am, I can actually just voice and say, please don't. At least I can request, please don't pay to perform, or right. I say, please pay to watch because that is how artists go. Yeah. So please pay to watch these artists because that is a livelihood. So that right. is what I'm doing. I'm not uh, judging anybody, but I'm constantly right. putting out request that please do right. this. Young dancers need a fair playing field. otherwise they can't survive this art will go off so that is what i'm trying right. to do right uh janaki just give me a, a moment i'm just going to get a bottle of water just give me a second just a second yeah
sorry about that um um janak i wanted to ask you really about you know you you sort of juggle your time uh between chennai and the us right yeah uh, i want to ask you about you know um what more, is the but on the indian subcontinent <laughs> less okay less. now more yeah okay i'm more of a global yeah. let us put it that way but anyway i understand where you're coming from akila right i just want to understand uh, janki what are some of the you know some of the luxuries you enjoy when you are in chennai and some of the little freedom that you perhaps enjoy when you are in the us or or nothing changes like you know i mean i just want to understand how your life sort of what are the dynamics of your life that kind of undergo a shift when you sort of move continents um uh for somebody who's constantly traveling which is what i've been doing pre covid let us put it that way mm-hmm. and hopefully situation will improve post covid i'm just praying right. for all of us right uh, uh i should say that um there is not much of a life difference for me very okay. much truth for me there is not a life difference right. for me because my way of life is the same wherever i am Okay. Uh, just uh, some logistical things here and there. That's yeah. all. Yeah. So that's all. Right. But when it comes to right. my life itself, like personal life and what I do on everyday basis, really doesn't yes. change at all. Because I like, okay. well, I'm one of those OCD people who like to stick to a routine so that, okay. <laughs> so that <laughs> everything flows. Yeah. nicely so that yeah. is what i do so i really am not able to answer um uh, sometimes when uh, i'm traveling i if i want to uh, uh, talk to somebody or something like that have a conversation i mean right now technology is all good and all that but if i want yeah. to have uh, access to a literature let's say for right. it, it's uh, uh, being outside right. of india it's very difficult for me limiting yeah very limiting right. that way resource yeah. that way to so, what i yeah. need it limits me right. but that doesn't right. mean i'm so paralyzed or anything i find ways to do it right so right. we right now i think we are become so you also i'm probably sure i kela global citizens and we can access everything yeah. from it. today everything is everything is yeah you have to know how to search where to search how to ask whom to ask yeah what are the questions yeah. we are uh, uh, constantly uh, thinking about no i mean uh, it's interesting that you talk about how uh, in a certain way your life doesn't change because you stick with habit and obviously you're a stickler for routine so and that uh, that routine also is something i want to talk to you about janaki like why for a dancer or for dancers at large um is there a, this, this routine and this rigor right your your dance especially like people talk about how hard you work and continue to work hard why is that would you believe that hard work is the only sure shot to success in that sense absolutely there is no shortcut to hard work at all um, you can fool a few you can fool a few hundred but you can't fool everyone every time you can't do that. right you can you can fool 10 people in one concert another people 100 people in another concert okay what about every single concert every performance you are up there you can't fool and audience are not fools they know what yes. they are watching they may not be initiated completely into what they are watching but what is right. good and bad anybody can say it apart right and for right. an art you have to be i i truly believe i'll just say it for myself i truly believe that every day you have to be completely involved in that art and what it takes for you to better your art better yourself you are a mere mm-hmm. instrument you are nothing but a mere instrument and for right. you to project that art you need to better that instrument constantly and what does right. that mean hone that instrument what does that mean it involves the mind and the body right the body is a monkey it will not listen to you if you let go of it it's like a horse right. you need to, you need to right. pay to it very closely and if you don't right. do it every day you can't be an artist don't please don't do that because art like right. i really really said it requires complete surrender to it every surrender. day whether you have performance whether you have classes doesn't matter you go and start practicing and for me yoga is extremely important first thing in the morning yeah. is to align that mind you get up and you align the mind you got to let go of everything that has happened before and for 
a couple of hours align that mind with your body and keep going at it yeah yeah and when you right. sleep you should have you should have gained some knowledge that day even if it was a particle of sand some knowledge you've gained something you have done better in your body in your mind to understand this art and that is how i look and that day is that day is done that is a fulfilling day for me and then i go to sleep i say okay this is what i've learned today this is what i've done in my instrument today right what did you learn yesterday janaki i'm just curious how was your day yesterday uh yesterday i had, i was reading i'm a big fan of poetry so i was i was reading some poetry you know that yeah uh today i put it outside on instagram also so this oh. somebody who said that shiva's foot touched the dust and the dust became the stars was something that was the imagery of it was something for me so i Some said so wonderfully these people imagine how what blessed right. souls they are how wonderfully yeah. they so like that i mean every day i learn either in my space or i when i dance i find something about myself a particular movement or something i'm trying to move a particular way i'm not able to do it and i find to find try to find out why why is it and try to so those things matter to me akila they are very small things uh, right. but matter to me that's all that is what it means to me right uh, you know janaki for sorry go ahead please no i'm i just said i'm exploring constantly it's nice to explore right Uh, Janak, uh, would you believe that uh, for an artist to and like you know to constantly introspect and to constantly imagine? This is a question I've asked another dancer as well, and I'm going to ask you: Do you think that there is a need for uh, quiet and for uh, to kind of you know sort of uh, cut away from noise, yeah. silence? How important is silence? You also practice yoga, so you know that. Uh, yeah silence is where you learn the most for me for me that is what it is because to be silent is the most difficult thing to to find real silence not the outward silence you can find yeah. you yourself out but the inward silence is we are all trying to find out we are all in the journey to find that inward silence and uh, it is a journey akila it, i'm not going to say that i'm i'm that uh, elated soul yeah. that has found silence because i know that it will take me a f- next few hundred years for me to find that silence and i'm never going to find it probably but the journey is still there and i'm trying to find it and it's very important to get a clear perspective of your thought when your thoughts are completely muddled and it's not when you are still and you're thinking about something your perspective kind of really changes and you begin to understand it at a very deep level and for that that stillness is very important i feel without taking it right. and without being judgmental about anything just letting it go and looking at it as for what it is that silence is very important to just understand um right. that is very important because we are all preconditioned to be judgmental it is it is yeah. in all of us it is there immediately we judge but yeah but uh, we find it very difficult to you know just stay and just listen and not mm-hmm. think about it at all think of, not take any thing be very neutral that neutrality is something very difficult and for but me that janaki do you think but do, do you think that uh, silence often also comes from a place of noise like you have to go through like so much yeah. noise to kind of finally say that i'm so, done i have to the, be that, why you say you ask me the question when did you start introspecting when did yeah. you find what for this is that you are going through when yeah. did you find definitely not when i was younger 100% sure i know how i was uh, young uh, when i was young so i know the difference uh, years have made on me so i think that that experience is very important i don't want to negate that experience i don't want to negate the mistakes that i've done i will yeah. own up to them because those mistakes or whatever they are they are experiences right. for me they are lessons for me they taught me something so i right. am very uh, you know careful about saying that you know horrible no they might be horrible whatever but they were made and they taught me something and now i am at a place where what matters what matters most to me what matters most to me correct that correct. matters most to me matters not right. what 
is to everyone else around me not anymore for sure not yeah it. in fact um, that uh, in that context i wanted to ask you a question janki you've also been writing a lot um you know speaking your mind and articulating your voice on so many matters um why do you think it's imperative to speak up and in a certain way art teaches us humility but it also teaches us it also empowers us with a sense of confidence yeah, right to kind of be able to say what we want to say without the fear of being judged um so i want to ask you like why why is speaking up important the fear of being judged is not gone completely in any anybody akila i think so yeah. graded that's sure. all yeah Just, there course, is a little yeah. part of us who oh, what if she or so he always, thinks something like this about us there is always yeah. that question is like a dagger hanging over your over your head that is why i said it's going to take years and years for us to get rid of it completely and say i don't care whatever and things like okay. that uh, so yeah. that is there but uh, to speak up is very important a lot of injustice happens when you don't speak up and when you are in a place you are given a position you are endowed with a voice that uh, is capable of uh, reaching out to the wider public um mm. i would like to use it for a greater um, cause than just myself of course i use my platforms to promote my work my performances my other activity yeah. but i also would like to use it for a greater cause and if it, it can reach two people three people it's fine it's reach yeah. somebody i don't care how yeah. many people it reaches but i have been bestowed with it and i should be grateful for it people have bestowed with uh, me with it if you yeah. say followers or whatever i don't know i i'm not going to ask why you follow me but whatever i put on my uh, handle i'm sure you're going to see it and right. you're going to get a perspective you don't have to agree with me you don't have to disagree with yeah. me yeah. at least you're looking at a different perspective and you it will uh, move you to think take your own decision yeah. later on and also this famous fickle this famous very fickle in 24 hours Absolutely. i can lose every single thing that i've earned over the years that is what i've realized really i'm grateful right. that today you, you and me are talking on the hindu weekend page akila that is all that's all you yeah, told very much completely so when <laughs> i have this so called fame so called reach i might as well do something about it use it yeah yeah there is a lot of injustices uh, in the field akila what to what to do we have to find ways to have conversations yeah conversations. yeah let's have uh, conversations where we can put forth our thoughts without uh, uh oppressing other thoughts right but janki do you think the, the, that's an interesting point but do you think the the world has changed in a certain way that conversations are even possible like 10 years ago this was not even like possible right yeah. or do you think the dance world has opened up a little in terms of um sort of being open to have these conversations if Con- things are possible but how educated the conversations are is where my question right. right you can put anything for example if i say something on the on it's it's my opinion but also when you want to have really good conversations that inspire change let them be educated let them come from right. an educated perspective so what happens many times is yes we have more avenues for conversation with the social media awareness a lot of people can converse right now but is everyone that's conversing have done their due research before putting forth anything and everything throwing anything now it sometimes i feel like you just say something just for the heck of saying it yeah are you even going back and doing some research and studying about it or looking at different perspectives of it before having a educated conversation so what kind of conversation akela what kind of conversation yeah Absolutely. that is important because conversations are important but what kind is also important no for sure yeah i agree with you so that is yeah. where we are all uh, uh, you know trying to you know figure this out nobody knows we are all trying to figure it out together we are trying to figure it out nobody knows yeah right um um janki also like uh, you know by virtue of being a sort of you know i mean the dance world is a sort of a inherently a lonely world like every dancer is like kind of like dealing with challenges for own and i'm sure like uh, your dance has come under criticism 
and i wanted to talk to you about you know recently you wrote about how one needs to distinguish between criticism and bullying i thought it was a really powerful you know post and very very yeah. uh, critical for young dancers who are kind of just starting off their careers and stuff i want to ask you again to say talk about why is criticism crucial and when do when should when do people get to know that this is below the belt and how does one handle below the belt now yeah below the belt um i want to say call out but how long will you call out below the belt yeah. because of ignorance it's darkness in the mind it's so much darkness there is so much insecurity it comes from a place where you feel insecure you need to shine light on yourself find ways to remove your darkness because people some people don't want to remove the darkness they are very safe in the darkness they rather yeah. poke they poke at someone that is all that is where that below the belt kind of thing comes from it does not come from a place of uh understanding deep understanding of what they are talking about there is no understanding there akila anybody can do below the belt and if right. that place if you are if you want to call it out sure call it out if you want to do that but predominantly uh, over till today i have had below the belt i have chosen to ignore this nonsense it's cacophony nothing but cacophony it adds nothing to my life it adds no value to my art it adds Absolutely. nothing it has nothing it has no value i consider it to be nothing when what what do you say about nothing you don't say anything about nothing you just leave it it's nothing so that right. is all so that is where i am and but at the same time when it comes from a knowledgeable place when there is knowledge yeah. involved when they are looking out for you when they want to tell yeah. you that this is what i have understood this what you said i know, i understood your voice but this is where i disagree with there should be disagreement there should be that conversation yeah but from sure. educated perspective from a knowledgeable perspective and if somebody critiques you like that you sit and listen that's your job that yeah. is your yeah. job when you put yourself on stage you are a public persona yeah you will listen to critiquing constructive criticism is part of your life you don't like that you don't become a public performer end of story right So um, I just noticed uh, Maven Koo says that below the belt is when it's personal and it has nothing to do with the work. Yeah. So thanks, Anna. <laughs> thanks, Anna. That is what nothing. It adds nothing to anything. Personal is you don't dig into personal things. Leave it alone. You look at the professional part of that artist. What the work? What the value of the work is? And that is where your uh, uh, opinion matters. And please make sure yeah. your opinion matters. Don't just talk rubbish. because you will be swept to the side so don't do that yeah great thank you for that janki i also want to ask you one question and then i'll maybe take a couple of people who do below the belt they are devaluing themselves you are lessening yourself that is all you are lessening your worth don't do it it's not worth anything yeah lovely Um Janki I also want to ask you about I know that you love biking you're also deeply inspired by nature I want to talk to you about how um spending time in the outdoors directly or indirectly affects your dance Can you can it humble perhaps it, like I find yeah, that share a particular instance or a moment or something like that from one of your you know biking experiences or spending time that actually translated into the way you kind of perceived your dance there is only one thing that happens to me every time i am in nature biking whatever it may be it tells me how fragile i am it talks about my fragile existence it talks about how minuscule my existence is and gives me a proper perspective of what my worth is in the bigger picture considering what nature can do easily to us i think we need to check ourselves every now and then and see how fragile we are and we are really yeah. nothing compared to what she has to offer yeah. so every yeah. time the reason why i go into it is there is stillness that happens and i learn a lot of from nature itself and how how she is not waiting for you to tell you what she is she doesn't care she is 
she is and she does her work without expecting anything she does her work and for me that tells me just do it this is your existence yes. just do it don't keep on expecting I'm, i'm 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 human i do expect i'm not again i'm not a saint but it also no, seems no. to me that okay just be just be just do it do whatever you can just add whatever value you can so this is this is why i keep going back i'm huge into nature and biking is something i like to do uh, you know apart from yoga and dance i really i don't do anything else apart from it so biking is a way for me to just you know enjoy just the outdoors and you know the wind on your face as they say it's a cliched expression but let me again right. use cliched expression the wind on your face is just right yeah it takes yeah. so a lot of thoughts happen during that time akila a lot of thoughts yeah happen. right uh, i think there's a question from maven and he'd like to know uh, janaki i've always been interested in how you develop the subjects of sahitya um can you talk about a bit about your perspective on sahitya development beyond the literal maven anna you asking that is huge for me my namaskarams to anna first um anna like everybody uh, there is a uh, but i truly believe in delving into the poetry first and understanding it for what it is starting from who composed it what time it was composed and the understanding of the character or the plot um in that and i i love to uh, look at each and every single word to understand the in depth meaning not just the literal but go beyond the uh, literal meaning and the silences in between i'm somebody who likes the silence in between the words so kind of look into how the words have been arranged and why they have been said a particular way not any other way but this is the way that the composer chose to wrote it uh, write it so those are things i look and then um I if it's a traditional composition I like to keep as true to the voice of the composer without going too much away from it but also at the same time I'm sure Anna knows this to explore inside it to find my own voice in that character and see how much I can push into that and my own experiences come into play there also so Anna those are some of the things that I use um I don't know if I answered the question uh, properly but that is what I wanted to say and the right. my current experiences play a large role in in it also not just but also I don't want to always look at something with the lens that I have 21st century lens I also like to transport myself Uh, to a different time and era and kind of look at it from that lens and understand it and then play between both have like a play between it so right. kind of go back and forth kind of play and see how far i can push this and also there is not just a literal meaning of course anna knows this um there is also a depth philosophical meaning what what it means to say that word if you say a particular word there's so much depth in that word connotation comes in the way you tonal value of that word comes in everything lot of things come into that one word and when you think of right. sa yeah they are composed of so many words so all those things i want to understand different layers of it and then see right. where i stand with my understanding and it, it keeps evolving the more i uh, uh, study the more i keep uh, reading the more uh, i keep on understanding and the whole piece kind of changes with every time i find something different and i want to keep it evolving Right. Yeah. Thank you, Janki. I just want to ask you one question, and I want to take this one comment from uh, Varun Khanna. But before that, Janki, just quickly, if you can tell me, like, you know, just from seeing all the online, uh, you know, uh, frenzy of dancers performing, and just overall, like, you know, the way things are shifting in a certain way, what do you see as the future of mm -hmm. dance and of of a young dancer? Uh, Uh, what would you have to say to them janki like you know um yes right now we are all uh, going virtual and uh, i don't want to come across as a person who is against online platforms and things like that i do believe that this is uh, this is a good way to project your work as long as uh, you know the work has been well done and you are projecting it in the manner that it should be or you yeah think of projecting it rather yeah. and don't just do it for one my uh, 
just for the sake of doing it that's what i'm saying you really want to do it you put in time and effort into that work right. absolutely this is a beautiful way of projecting it because now uh, it's opened up a whole different world of opportunities in my opinion um, those who have craving for opportunities or who thought that okay i could not be part of this platform or whatever now they have this right. new found thing but please use it right. responsibly is what i wanted to say um right in 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 ways that you know make sure that um um that you're not overdoing it also you wouldn't do yeah. that stage you wouldn't overdo on stage either so i don't right. think you should overdo it on the virtual platform also um um the other thing is th- i think there is the beauty that one has when somebody is physically sitting and watching a performance that is something that palpable yeah. energy akila that is what this art is about yeah. that is theater akila that is why the immediately right after you do you have the result yeah you don't of wait course. immediately you have the result whether they liked it or they didn't like it period end of story sometimes while itself right while itself so that <laughs> ab- that palpable energy is something that every artist i'm sure every artist you like that yeah. i'm seeks that right. yeah, you are constantly sharing the energy with the audience at that moment all of us are in the same wavelength Things. hopefully and enjoying yeah. it experiencing that moment together that i'm sure it'll come back but until then let us forage into this new world and see how it can benefit the artist community at large akila i would like to put it that way let us see how it benefits the artist community at large mm-hmm. not just ourselves but mm-hmm. how does it let us make it make sure that everybody benefits out of it properly mm-hmm. and not, not take lovely by um janaki there was this one uh, comment that varun khana makes uh, based on this point on criticism he says i agree with what you said about criticism there are people celebrated artists he says who work really hard and let it be uh, whether people like it or not and let it be what suits the audience how do you see it i uh, see ultimately when you go on stage and put your work it's your voice uh um, right. you- project it you are no you shouldn't be changing it or tweaking it according to what people may think may not think agree don't agree finally it is your voice that needs to be projected that is why you are an artist that is your art you are going to show it as you perceive it later on we right. can have conversations about why somebody disliked it or disagreed with it sure those are healthy conversations that should happen but not when you are performing when you are performing right. who and your art that is a very sacred space where you belong and that is not uh, to be tweaked for somebody else's imagination of what it should be should yeah i don't think <laughs> so again varun karna yes let it be and then we can dissect it as much as we want it's open for dissection it has yeah. to be yeah. that is what i said right. you are in a, you are a public performer everything is dissected except for personal lives hopefully not right just one last question janki before i let you go because at 10 o'clock the insta live session will end promptly in an hour i just want to ask you as a dancer who's sort of crafted for yourself a unique voice and style of your own how do you uh, constantly encourage your students to find their voice um, yeah. you know so uh, the first thing that uh, i tell my students is if you at any point of time look like me when you are dancing i will disown you right i don't want that i don't want a legacy of anything the legacy right. should be like i did my work during my time and even during choreographies i say okay the skeleton of the choreography is my thought it's... process but beyond yeah. that you need to think about the choreography don't just do it think about it layer it who who are you who is this person who is dancing what is this body that is dancing how is the movement thought about during this da- uh, when this body is dancing all that matters in bringing that voice out so these right. are some things that i constantly tell them think educate yourself i'm not saying constantly disagree or anything like that but always right. think go back and think you learned a choreography think about it 
sit and think why did she do why did she put these movements and what these movements mean to me what does it mean to me how can i think about it and uh, layer it the word i always is layer it so yeah, yeah. Uh, i t- t- totally don't like uh, people who just say i want to dance i mean i'm not saying that i mean uh, it's uh, it's all right <laughs> i see what you mean though i'd rather you don't say it at all uh, but uh, you know get inspired we all get inspired we should keep getting inspired by works by every single beautiful artist they put out so many beautiful works we should get inspired but then as we get inspired we need to also think about why and what and how what? it inspired yeah. and even those things that we like let us question it why did i like it we are always questioning what we don't like why don't we question what we like why do we like something that right. gives a bigger understanding of who we are then yeah yeah what we are moving towards so right. these are some of things i i more than just uh, teaching just them choreographies or whatever a teacher does these are things i constantly remind them rather remind yeah. them. i'm there i tell them yeah. i i'm going to remind you i'm a person i'm sitting here to remind you of these things so that when right. you come out as your own that you have you to, yeah. you have this voice that you don't need me anymore speaks yeah 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 lovely that's all so Jackie, that yeah i want to say that i i i'm so like uh, it's going to be very difficult for me to go to bed like right now <laughs> i'm going to struggle because i'm so wired right now thank you so much thank you and so i want to say that i loved your absolute conscious choice of words but they're conscious with conviction and i think that is so important because yes. i thought that you the way you spoke you were so like you know i just thought this conscious with Julia. conviction thank you so much thanks those for are that. Really- and i hope uh, all of us come out of it we are already coming out of it let us put it that way we are coming out of yeah. it we yeah. are initiates and we are uh, you know hard wired uh, people so we will come out of it and we will know how to live with it also so that is where Correct. we are we are living with us yeah we are making everything safe for us and everybody around us and we are living with it and that's all we yeah. will part and hope to see you in person soon akila take care of yourself yeah likewise like you my, rightly said janki i think the and the, thanks, the want to say, my thanks to everyone who uh, came online and spent your time and effort uh, listening to us thank you very much for your presence truly thank you right. yeah like i like to think janki like you rightly said that it's made us conscious of the fragility of life but also inherently made us stronger so i think it's beautiful uh, uh, lesson that we've learned uh, from this pandemic and thank you so much for really enriching us uh, for this one hour i'm going to take back a lot and thank you to everyone who joined this conversation um, stay safe see you soon yeah, bye 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 bye